Wow, 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 wow. As you can see, Larry, we uh, haven't changed much in terms of uh, how low we were stooping. <laughs> I'm glad the standards have remained as low as they were, were when I was in the show. Good, good, right? High Very five. happy. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Why do people do those songs? Like, do I they... love it. I was, you, did you see I was transfixed? I was really enjoying that. Why were you so involved? You were lost in there. No, 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 because it reminds us that we all don't have talent. <laughs> It's a wonderful thing. What is your talent, actually? I have no talent. Do you think if I had the talent, I'd be a journalist? God, no. Oh, my gosh. If I was better, if I was good at other things, I would be doing those things. That's not true. This is true. Really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Mr. Larry Madoo. Aki, thanks. Larry gosh, thanks. Larry Omondi Madoo. Wow, well, you're going to get a picture. Oh, Paul, what are you doing? You're going to get a picture. You're going to get a picture. You're going to get a picture, baby. It's true, you How know someone you? as Ju Lil Hu and then yeah. the Mpesa name is... Then Mpesa just... Cleo you know, Pastiju, just humbles you. Yep, it just then reveals just all like, your yep. deep dark secrets. I'm that guy, I mm. really, I really am. You've been traveling everywhere. I... Where have you not been at this point? Yeah. Or, and you want to go? Where I want to go? Yeah. I've never been to Australia. I really want to go. The business will take you. I guess so. Our story will take you. But why do you travel? Is your reason for travel usually business or is it more, you know, just... It's leader? a mixture of... Uh, both. Mm -hmm. I travel for work, I travel for pleasure, I travel because I speak at different things, mm -hmm. I travel because I'm covering different things, and sometimes I travel because I've got family or friends in these places or the places I wanted to be, so I go on vacation. Yeah, and you have a lot. How many people are called Madua? I'm confused. They so are. I thought you only had one <laughs> sister. And then everywhere you go, I'm always like, I'm here with Suju, who, 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 Madua, and who, who, Madua. I have just one sister, yes, Liz Madua. But there's so many other Madoos. My extended family were very many and were very loud. I'm the quietest. Ah. True story. I am the quietest <laughs> of all the Madoos. My grandfather, actually both my grandfathers had three wives. My dad's father and my mom's father both had three wives. I'm descended from the second wife on both sides. Yeah. Yes. And you have no wife. And they're all... <laughs> Sorry, go on, Larry. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and then and they all have... They all multiplied and filled the earth, which means I've got lots of cousins that are amazing. Yes, they do. Yes. However... They're really, really great people. And you get to travel because they all live... They all live in all um, different parts of the world. Yes. And you get to visit them. Yes, because I'm a cheapskate. I want free board, <laughs> free room and board. I'm not paying for a hotel. Actually, this is the trick that Larry uses to travel. And I feel like maybe a lot of people don't share this, but if you want to travel the world, it's very expensive. Yes. And what are your hacks? Oh, my hacks, one is public transport. You will find me on the train, on the bus, on, on the, the tram, on the ndudi, all of walking, those things. Running, walking, a lot, of, a lot of, some of the greatest cities are actually walking cities. New York is like that, London is like that, and I spend a lot of time in London. And they are cities where you literally walk from one place to the other. Mm. It's better, it's faster, uh, and it's cheaper, obviously, yes. than having to take a, a black cab, for instance, would be horrendously expensive. So that's one. Two is buy a local SIM card mm. because you can't always, if you're trying to roam for, with your Kenyan phone number, for instance, it's just so expensive. So buy a local SIM, data is cheap, that helps. Find the street joints to eat, they're cheaper, the food is really great, it's all fresh and you don't have to queue up to um, yeah. get a table. Like at the street joints, they're yeah. the best, the vendors, they're really, really especially great like food. cities like New York, when you go, you know, you eat on the go yeah. because they're constantly working. And go on a food busy. truck and, and, and get a, um, a hot dog or a hamburger or um, I don't know. Um, a taco on the go, mm. really good food, Anything, really fresh. burrito, just yep. to get you going. And then, you know, when you started traveling, it opened your eyes to a whole new world. And you started changing as a person and how you view the world. How, I mean, if people, are, of course, you know, for the people who are watching right now, would you tell them that they need to get on a plane right now and they need to just see Absolutely. Um, I always feel like I'm compensating for all the time I didn't travel. I only got on a plane for the first time when I was 21. So it was really late. I, yeah. didn't, I, I didn't come from a family where we could afford to fly when I was younger. I was barely struggling to pay school fees. Mm -hmm. So 21 is the first time I got on the plane. And I feel like every other time I have to try and uh, compensate and um, make up for all the time I lost. I got an appreciation of travel because my mom was a primary school teacher and she brought me books from all over the world and she taught me. And they, I, lear I, I learned about all these great cities and Rome and Madrid and uh, San Francisco and places I really hope to see because I'd read about them in books. Mm. And uh, over the past few years, I've, been, I've had the privilege of being able to go to lots of these places. And it just opens your mind. Travel, I think, is one of the most amazing things that you can ever do. And I realize this is a form of privilege because not everybody has that chance. That is true. But if you, if you can, absolutely. If, you, if there's an opportunity for you to go and volunteer and teach English in India, mm. if they'll pay for your tickets and, and, and food, 
You should go. Take it. Would you teach though? I would. I, I keep telling my friends that I could leave this job and go and teach English in India. Ah. I think it would be awesome. No. Or be a better. Tibetan monk. A better be a monk. Yeah. I think that would be very interesting. There's that. Um, he's a he's a business mogul. I've forgotten his name. He's also a motivational uh, mm -hmm. speaker, and he 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 met a monk and he changed his life. And I oh. met a monk actually before I came to NTV. Right. And I interviewed and him, and, and I can't believe life? it completely did. Mm -hmm. My view on life, my view on people. It's very important. The energy that you surround yourself with is right. very important. Then you start to understand why people are so negative and why they hate so much. It's because it's a reflection of a lot of things that they're going through. Or their insecurities. Right? Or even that too um, so you used to read a book a week are you still keeping up with that I still do try and read a book a week Wow okay so Life. I got you I got you a book oh wow um, and it should be somewhere here mm -hmm. I don't know who took it it was right surely I think it was maybe my producer but anyway so they're gonna maybe get it to me is it there where did it go there, okay, no, it's not there. Okay, fine, no problem. <laughs> We're gonna get it. But I did get you one. I don't know where they, my producer. What is the book about? Don't worry, you'll see oh, it and then okay. you will know. Sawa. Don't worry, you'll see Sawa. it and then you will know. Okay? All right. Um, so now, when it comes to social media, you get as much hate as you do get love. And, you know, from when you took the show from James Smart, there was a lot of um, hate that you got, still get. And you never, ever, not once seemed to even. Was, were you always like this from before or the industry just thickened you up? I think you learn to develop a thick skin. When I started out, I was really young. I got my first job on TV when I was exactly 20 years old. And that's not the time in your life when you're, you, you've, you've got your life together. You're only learning. And what happened is I was wondering, why are these people saying such nasty things about me? They don't know me. They don't know where I'm from. They don't know what I've been through. And they didn't change it. So I just decided I'm going to try and live my life. And it was the most liberating thing to allow myself to be myself and not worry, not try and get expectations, not have my expectations set by the public, by social media, by mm. all of that. I was just saying, I have an audience of one God. He's the one I'm trying to please. And I don't really care about what anybody else on social says because I can't really meet the expectations. I can't, I'm not trying to seek their approval. Yeah, that is true. And then one of the, you know, a lot of personal questions, of course, keep on coming up. And you know, one of your marital status, who you're with all the time, it must get really annoying. It is, because I'm here to talk about something entirely different. No, I know, but why, why is that even a thing that anyone cares about? I don't you know. know what people, I mean? people have a strange um, interest in, in other, Actually, other strangest personal lives. Dr. Ezekiel Mutua also told you, oh, da, 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 da. it was very off from what you were talking about. But um, it's part of life and it's part of what you do, right? Absolutely. I can imagine. It comes with territory. It really does. And all of these ter territories got you to now one of the biggest positions over at BBC. Not really. It is. Not really. From where we're standing, I'm just right? still a, a storyteller. I'm just a storyteller. But as an African editor. Um, right. So my role at the BBC is um, African business editor and mm -hmm. what we do is we tell stories really. And what is fascinating for me is that we tell stories about Africa's transformation, about the many people I've traveled across this continent have met entrepreneurs who just absolutely blew my mind with I their know. ingenuity, with the ideas that, was, that are just changing lives every day. Mm -hmm. And we have a program, the first we have launched, which is great because it's on NTV, it's called BBC Smart Money. It's on NTV every Wednesday at 10 p.m. And on this program, we're taking a very fresh look at business. So instead of, I used to be a business reporter many moons ago, people don't realize this. And the kind of business I did at NTV or CNBC or all of the places I worked, KTN, is slightly different from this, which is we're trying to approach business from the average viewer's perspective, often a young viewer. The average population of Africa is so much younger than almost anywhere else in the world. And we want to be able to make sure that we're giving them tips and advice and tricks to how ma to make more money, how to think of a side hustle, for instance. We had a story in our first episode, which aired this past Wednesday on NTV, of a guy who's a lawyer, but also runs a matatu. He's a matatu driver, mm -hmm. and he makes more from his matatu then than from, his, from legal, his, his legal job. Wow, which he and spent years learning and driving. Exactly. And he, he went to university, he had to go to law school, ETC. Yeah. But these are the kinds of stories we are telling. Yeah. And in, in that process, we're telling you, we're hearing from personal finance experts who are saying, this is how you should look about, this is how you should go about your side hustle. This is where you get money, this is what you look out for, don't mm -hmm. put too much in one basket, mm -hmm. ETC. Okay. And the whole program 
is filled with stories from across Africa on the economy, the best entrepreneurs on the continent, how to make and keep money mm. and basically how to get ahead. Yes, how to create and start up sustainable businesses across the continent, exactly. especially those that are tech based because that is where the world is going. So Larry could talk all day about it, but we do have a teaser, so take a look. This week on Smart Money. Get rich quick saving schemes. They promise you an incredible return on your money, but all too often they're just scams where no one wins. I'm on the trail of the money-making forces who just won't leave us alone. Annually, the fitness industry generates billions of dollars worldwide. And here in Africa, we too have caught the fitness bug. Billions of dollars are lost every year by farmers and traders as our food makes its journey to our plates. Journey with me through Malawi as I ask the bigger question. Can Africa really feed itself? That is true. And you know, recently I was moderating the African Youth Conference at the mm -hmm. UN and they were talking about that. They do, you know, we have a lot of aid and we, we need to move away from for two dollars a day you right. can save an African mm -hmm. da, 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 because we're not doing that anymore and we have a lot of talented innovative young people and that's what the show is going to be about. I see a lot of opportunity in Africa and what we're doing with the BBC Smart Money is showing you so many of those opportunities. If you, you will see somebody, I wear a beard these days. When you ran the video of when I left the show I didn't have a beard. <laughs> no. <laughs> Which is strange how, how much difference a year makes. And in that year I've started wearing a beard and you know what? So razor sales might be dropping globally but there's a whole lot of new businesses that are taking advantage of young millennials wearing beards. Mm. So there's beard oil companies, there's all sorts of other grooming products for men, and these are entrepreneurs. Like Mandevu, there's one here. Mandevu in Kenya, in Kenya is brilliant. But I use Mandevu products, for instance. They help, it's working. I can see. We use it now here. Ask them to make one for Fun. you. Fun. <laughs> but this, is the, this However, is the point, though. There's Mandevu in Kenya, there's Brothers Beard in South Africa, there's other businesses so in Nigeria. And so somebody who's watching this program, I think, okay, I think I have an idea. I could also do that. Yeah. And it's, it's just. It talks to what is possible if you expose young Africans to other young Africans changing their lives. And this show is going to be very different because usually when people hear BBC and when they watch shows about BBC, it's yeah. very, very um, serious. And it's this was British, going to be very uh, it's engaging. It's a British voice. Yes, <laughs> but this was going to be very different. There's going to be a bit of comedy here yes. and there. It's something we've not seen before. And we've seen that with the other shows as well that are going to be airing on NTV. Tell yeah. us about them. So we have, um, for instance, we've got Caris, the comedian, going around the continent meeting some of Africa's youngest entrepreneurs. He was in the last episode this week on NTV in Ghana speaking to somebody called Shasha who runs a wig business. And hair is big in West Africa. It's, it's big huge in Ghana. In the world. I can it's, tell you. Yes. It's huge here. It's yeah. huge here. Yeah. And then when, when you listen to that story, you're like, okay, if Shasha did it in Ghana, I think I can do that in Kenya. That's the opportunity. And that's one of the really lovely things about this idea, this the show, is that you get to learn from other young Africans and do so. But we've got all sorts of other great BBC content running on NTV. We've got our women's discussion program, The She Word, mm -hmm. which is on NTV on Saturdays at 6 p.m. Yeah. Again, four African women sitting around the table discussing women's issues in just a frank, unbelievably honest way. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. I think the it's feedback amazing. so far has been great. It's insane. And you know, the other day I was hearing about this community in South Africa. I think it's called the Venda community. Yes. Where when your husband calls you, you lie down. Imagine that. I'm like, bruh, that's a lie. My husband calls me so many times in a day and they actually carry like a piece of clothing where they're going <laughs> to... So these are the stuff that's coming up on the program. On Sundays, also here on NTV, we've got Talk It Out, which is our health program. Yes, you do. Presented by Sharon Mashira right now. Mm -hmm. it's, gr it's great. They were talking about suicide um, two weeks ago. It's a, such a difficult subject, but they approach it in a very accessible, easy to understand way. They give you data and statistics about which countries have the highest rates of suicide on the continent. And then they talk about where can you find help, what are the solutions available, where are the resources, if somebody's considering suicide and mental health. Yes. And these are conversations that sometimes you don't see problem. Africans talking about. And men actually here in Kenya are actually the biggest number of people. Who that's what, that's the thing that surprised me about the program. We have more men committing suicide than, than women. Because you guys don't share. Men don't speak as much as women do. Sadly. Yeah. yeah. For instance, you're scared of the dark. Who knows that? Right? <laughs> I told you that in confidence. I didn't know. We were drinking coffee. I thought it was part of the conversation. Let me tell you why I'm afraid of the dark, though. And this why? is a serious thing. <laughs> why? You know, growing up in the village, I grew up in CIA, uh -huh. and uh, we used to hear so many tales about witch doctors and especially night runners. <laughs> so if you're walking in the dark yes. 
and there's a guy who'd run with hyena across. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the myth, is not an urban myth, it's a rural myth, is that these people are in the nude, they run around with hyenas and they try and scare you. Mm -hmm. And when you're asleep, they come to your window, and when they're in your window, yeah. you can't move. Yeah. You'll be paralyzed. Yes. And so that, that person is right outside the window. Now I know it's sleep paralysis, mm -hmm. but growing up as a child, I was terrified because literally the night was dark and full of terrors. Oh, wow. That's, wow. That's so to date, quite... as a grown man, I am still I really, scared really of scared of the dark. It okay. makes no sense. I know it's irrational, but it's just, Completely. just accept me as I am. All right. We're going to take you as you are, Larry. <laughs> so before we hand it over to Kingori in Nyeri, let me ask you a few questions. If you were to start your own business, right, running a business uh, desk, having to hire all of these people across the continent, you must, of course, have had a few ideas here and there. What would it have been? If I was to start a business right yes. now, it would be something to do with tech. Because in technology, especially on the continent, that's where you see the most promise. And Nairobi is really one of the epicenters of the tech ecosystem and growth that we're seeing all, all over the continent. The others are Lagos and Cape Town. The young people on this continent who are attracting funding worth millions and millions of dollars. And they're solving sometimes very simple solutions like can farmers in rural areas get prices for what maize is? So that's, I would do something in tech, absolutely. Yeah. All right. So now, um, favorite book of all time? Favorite book of all time. You know the book which I think was going to be my favorite even though we, I haven't read them? Mm -hmm. The six books, A Song of Ice and Fire and all those Game of Thrones books. Oh, wow. What because now the series, the series has been... Has it's not come back in a while, so I need to start reading the book. 2019 oh, so is so far. It is not. We waited for two <laughs> years. We're fine. We will wait. We will watch the show. <laughs> we will love it. You disliked Snapchat when it first started. When it first started. Now you're big on it. I'm not What's big on Snapchat. Really? I'm not on Snapchat. You're not on Snapchat. I'm not on Snapchat who at has all. Who been posting you? You I'm have an imposter. You have an imposter. Really, there. somebody who looks like me? Yeah. I'm on. I'm on Instagram <laughs> stories, not Snapchat. What's your favorite? What's your favorite um, app though, and why? My favorite app. Whoa, whoa, favorite app. That is so difficult, like picking your favorite child. I think my favorite app is going to be Twitter. Okay. It's my window into the world. Okay, and it's, okay, that's fine. I mean, Twitter is pretty interesting. Twitter is, Twitter, Twitter is insane. Twitter yeah. is really insane. So here is a book that I was trying to get for you. <laughs> have you read this? I have not read it, actually, despite how famous it is. The book, Richard, Richard Branson. Richard Branson. Screw it, let's. Let's do it. Let's do it here. Do you know what he was going to call the book initially before his publisher refused? No. He was going to call it Getting It Up. Get it? Oh, wow. Well, well, we're <laughs> glad that he didn't uh, stick with that topic. And the reason oh, thank why you so it's much. that... It's amazing. It's because of the platform that you have been blessed with. You get to talk to young Africans, get to empower them, get to tell them when they're young that they can do it. We have now, you know, female president in Ethiopia. Yeah, she's amazing. You know, and, you know, stories told of a young boy in Liberia who says, when I grow up, I want to be a vice president. When asked, why don't you want to aim for the president? he says that the president is a woman's job because they've had a no. female president. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of society that, you know, people will be brought up in. So I hope that that will encourage you. Big, Thank you so you're big on, much. Um, uh, businesses, you're big on Netflix as well. What's your favorite I, show right now? My favorite show right now is, um, uh, is it Le, Le Casa de Papel? That's uh, Money Heist. The, the, the guys that plan to rob the Spanish Mint mm -hmm. and they actually go into the Spanish Mint, which mm -hmm. is like where they print um, the euro in Spain, and they lock it, and they took, take people hostage, and they print millions and millions of euros. It's wow. a fascinating story. It's a Spanish language film. It's amazing. The other show I just finished watching on Netflix is called La Monte. It's yes. in French. Mm -hmm. It's to help me practice my French. Oh, oui. Oui. Tu parles en français un peu, oui? Je parle en français. Ah, je sais, uh, as well. <laughs> I try <laughs> aussi. as well. Aussi. Toi aussi. Oui. <laughs> and you learned that you, you're teaching yourself French. I taught myself French. French on an app, yes. Okay, so at this point, you can churn your own butter. You can just you can make your own bread. <laughs> Listen, so for one night and one light, one night only, we have cat videos. Oh, you, you do! Oh, as a tribute to me. That's amazing. So let's take a look at the cat videos that we have coming in at number five. <laughs> oh, wow. Is this video over here? Ah, look at this one. 
It just, it's like me. You I know, need to go to the gym. <laughs> but yes, no. That cut is way too it's comfortable. It's never that serious. <laughs> it really is not that serious. That cut is way too comfortable. <laughs> Spoiled. Listen, if there's anyone I know who has the most corniest of jokes, it's got to be Larry. Come on. And he's I'm hilarious. Sarcastic. I'm hilarious. I really, really <laughs> love it. So these are stale jokes that I found that I know Larry will find hilarious. Oh, no. The rest of us will be. Shaking our heads. At the RIP <laughs> boiling water, you will be missed. <laughs> I once ate a watch. It was time consuming. Oh, this is such good jokes. <laughs> <laughs> it was time consuming. Oh, I love that one. There was a guy who got his entire left side cut off. Don't worry, he's old right now. <laughs> then, my cow just wandered into a field of marijuana. The stakes have never it's been so, so high. high. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, Liv, I have many jokes about unemployed people. Sadly, none of them work. <laughs> Finally, I accidentally drank a little food coloring last night. I ended up dying, dying inside. inside. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Those were really good. I'm easy to please. It's ridiculous. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I lost my job at the bank on my very first day. A woman asked me to check her balance, so I pushed her over. Some people think prison is one word, but to robbers, it's a whole sentence. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So if you didn't get them, it's okay. You just have a different sentence. <laughs> Next week, give you a tweet, Larry. But then I'm going to show you a show last week. I'm going to I'm just having a food baby. <laughs> yes, he is. Thank Can you I so just much, say Larry. thank you for mm -hmm. having me? And what an amazing job you do on the program. And I don't know when you have the time because you're hustling a minute. Yeah. You're on radio, you're on TV, you're um, doing events, you're just out here. And I think it's such a powerful, you're such a powerful role model for young women everywhere that you can build your own empire. Thank so you congratulations much, on all your success. Thank you very much. I just want to change the narrative, just like you, one girl at a time, that they don't have to lie on their back to get money. Mm -hmm. and Look at you, a little girl from where? From nowhere, literally just like you. Where is it called? It's called Moyale. Somewhere called Butia. And it's Butia to the Nairobi to the world. Moyale to the world. Moyale to the world. Thank you so much, Larry. Your story is also of inspiration. Thank you for having uh, me. People keep asking you to come back on the show. Ebu, tell them. It's tell not them. happening, fam. Yeah. I mean, it's got this now. Thank you, Larry. There's, no, there's, no, there's nothing left for me here to do because she is doing such an incredible job at it. I'm so proud of you and the whole team. Thank um, you. It's, it's, been, it's been great coming back and seeing Jaxo yeah. and Mike yeah. and Denga and everybody else just ki killing it. Yes. Really killing it. Thank you. Thank Again, you so much. BBC Smart Money and TV's <laughs> Wednesday at 10 p.m. Make sure that you watch it. And of course, it's on social media as well. It's all over BBC Africa social you media. You can go ahead and watch it. And I paid him to say all of those things. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she didn't pay me, by the way. I meant all of them. <laughs> Truly, you, it's been just inspiring watching you um, find your way in this city. I met you when you were at Homeboys. Wow, 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 wow. Do we need to talk about it? Larry told me that he applied at Homeboys so many times, was there at the reception so many times, and he never got in. Yes. And here he is now. So thank you so much for coming through. I really Santisana. appreciate it. We could go on and on and on and on and on, really. And on. maybe he'll come at another time as well when he's launching another show. If you want to join BBC also, just talk to Larry. Harassi Motota. What an story. Zaki has a personal life. Sawa, we're going to take a short break. We're going to be back. We're going to go to Nyeri. I will be out of here. Have a great weekend. Mwah.